Hey, how are you today? This is Brother Stanley. It is a great day out there today. I thank God for this wonderful day that He has made. Today, I have got a very, a very pressing message to share with you, and it's called the perfect oil. The perfect oil. But before I start, there's um, a revelation I would like to share with you, and it's a revelation that the Lord showed me last year. The Lord revealed this to me last year. On, on Friday the 19th of April 2013 at about 2.30 a.m. in the morning. I was in this mighty revelation and uh, I, in this mighty revelation I was seated with my brethren. I was seated with a group of brethren and as I was seated there, my pastor summoned me, he called me and he told me that there's a program he would like me to attend. He wanted me to attend this program, and this program is in a place very far away. For those who live in Ireland, it's like going from Dublin to Limerick. That's how far this, this place was. was. And um, as I obeyed to, to, to the instructions of my pastor, I, I discovered that I didn't have enough petrol in my car. For me to be able to attend to this program, I, I must fill my tank with petrol. Because the petrol I had, I didn't want to take chances. I didn't want to take any chances at all. So I had to make sure that I filled my car, my tank with petrol. And as I got to the fuel station, I discovered the fuel station was dark. The petrol station was pitch darkness. It, it wasn't, there wasn't a very good feeling about the, 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 the petrol station because it was dark. And at the same time, they didn't have enough petrol. They didn't have enough petrol for me to fill my tank with. And, and right beside me, by my right hand, stood a young man, a young man possibly in his late 20s. And he had a very little sports car. And after filling his tank with the petrol, he used that same petrol and was sprinkling over his car as though he was trying to watch his car with the little petrol that was left in, in the fuel station, you know? So I, I stood and I was a, a, little, a little bit bewildered by this sight, you know? And um, I, I was a little bit worried as to how, how I am going to get uh, enough petrol to, to attend to this program that my pastor wanted me to attend. And um, as I stood there, behold, right by me, or rather before me, at about 100 meters away from me, at the right hand side, I discovered that um, there was a ground there, you know, about 100 meters away. That ground was full of a heap of sand. You wouldn't know that... It looked insignificant, you know, that sand looked insignificant. You wouldn't know that there could be anything, you know, interesting in that place. But as I drew closer to this place, I discovered that there was abundance of oil beneath that ground. I discovered there was like abundance of oil beneath that ground. And this oil is kind of pure kind of oil. It's a pure kind of oil, unpolluted kind of oil, quality kind of oil, real kind of oil. And, and immediately, without any hesitation, I ran, I rushed rather towards this, this ground and I tried to draw oil from this ground. And as I tried to draw oil, I, I discovered one thing, that you needed wisdom. That you needed wisdom. I needed wisdom to be able to draw from this tank. Or rather from this ground. I needed wisdom. And this is godly kind of wisdom. You know? And this reminds me of um, a passage in the Bible, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 25 verse 2 which says that it is the glory of God to conceal a matter but it is the honor of kings to search out a matter so now this brings me to this question why then did God reveal this to me why did the Lord show me this revelation obviously when when the Lord speaks to, to you he, he doesn't speak to you because he wants to entertain you when, when the Lord Jehovah speaks to you, He doesn't speak to you because He wants to make you feel good. When He sends a revelation, there is a purpose for that revelation. There is an underlying purpose for any revelation that the Lord shows you. First of all, when the Lord speaks, you must first find it in the Bible. And, and, they, and after you find, find it in the Bible, you then ask yourself, what is the purpose for this revelation? So now, let, let, we, we will try to find out the purpose for this revelation. Now, in a minute. Now, now, we all know that for you to drive a car, there are three things involved. You need an oil in the car, you need a battery in the car, and you need a driver in the car. 
Now, what are the functions of oil? What are the functions of battery, rather? Battery is the main source of electrical power. Everything which needs electricity needs battery at the beginning. It is the battery that supplies power to the starter when the key is inserted in, in the ignition. Battery also stores enough power to be used later in case the alternator fails. Now, without a battery, the car would not start. Without a battery in the car, you cannot move a car. Assuming you get into your car and, and you put in the you turn on the ignition, without the battery triggering or, or giving the, the, the car enough power, it would not start. The car would not start. Now the, the battery is just like a, like our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ is like the battery that powers the car. The Christian, a Christian, a born again Christian is like the car. Just as the car has four tires, a Christian has two hands and two legs, obviously. Just as the car has two lights, a Christian has two eyes. So for a Christian to be able to move, he needs the Lord Jesus Christ. For a Christian to even start his journey to life, to eternal life, he needs the Lord Jesus Christ. Not just Christians, for anyone at all to start to begin a journey to eternal life, he needs the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the Bible says in John chapter 15, verse 5, Without me, you can do nothing. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, Without me, you can do nothing. Without the Lord Jesus Christ, you can do nothing. Without the battery that powers the car, the car cannot move. The car cannot even start. Without the battery, the car cannot start. You know? Now, another thing the car needs before for it to move smoothly is the, is the oil. Now, the oil has five functions in the car. The oil has five things that it does for, for, a, for a car. Number one, it lubricates the car. Two, it cools the car. Three, it cleanses the car. Four, it, it protects the car. And the fifth one is it restores the car. Now, how does the oil lubricate the car? The oil lubricate the car in a way that you know, for instance, when the, when the car starts driving, the higher the speed of the car, the harder the pistons have to work to pump oil throughout the car. So what, what the oil does is it, it forms a lubrication. It forms a slippery coat of, of lubri lubrication that makes the car to drive smoothly, that makes the engine to work smoothly. So the oil is just like the Holy Spirit. First of all, our Lord Jesus Christ, which is like the battery that powers the car, helps a Christian to start his journey. It is then the Holy Spirit that helps a Christian to move smoothly. Just as the oil helps the engine of the car to move smoothly, to function smoothly. It's the same way that the Holy Spirit helps the Christian to move smoothly in his walk with Christ. Without the Holy Spirit, a Christian cannot move smoothly. Without the Holy Spirit, you will always have like a friction. Just as the car, just as the, the, the car sometimes, the engine of the car without the oil can have frictions. It's the same way that a Christian would, would not be able to move, you know, smoothly in his walk with Christ without the Holy Spirit. Now, another thing the engine oil does for the car is uh, it, it protects the car. It protects the car from... You know, from frictions. It's the same way that the Holy Spirit protects the Christian. Another thing the engine oil does for the car is uh, it cools the car. You know, it cools the lower parts of the car. Just as the antifreeze, you know, just as the antifreeze, you know, cools the, the, the car engine. It's the same way that the, that, that the engine oil cools the car, you know. It cools the car engine, especially the lower parts of the car engine, like the um, you know, like the rod bearings and the timing gears. It's the same way that the Holy Spirit cools a Christian down. You know, sometimes we Christians can can get into all 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 sorts of um, you know trials and tribulation, and at that time we our flesh almost like takes over. But then it, it is the at that particular time it is the Holy Spirit that calms you down. It is the Holy Spirit that speaks to your heart. It is the, you know, it is the Holy Spirit that cools you down 
at that time when you you tend you tend to flare up when let's say uh, people say things to you nasty things to you and you become very hot and you become very hot tempered it is the job of the holy spirit at that time to calm you down what the holy spirit does for the christian at that time is he calms that christian down you know the holy spirit reminds you uh, verses in the bible like um, do, do, do be angry but do not sin do not let let the sun go down on your wrath neither give way to the devil you know all the verses like that will, will come springing will come into your heart at that time when you, the Christian, uh, at that time when you feel like you're hot, you're hot tempered, or that you, you you're upset because of what people did to you, or that the journey with Christ is, is getting very tough, it is the Holy Spirit then that comes in and calms you down and reminds you of what is ahead of you, and reminds you of why you are in this journey to start with. So it, it is the job of the Holy Spirit to cool you down, just as the engine oil cools the, the lower parts of the engine. It's the same way that the Holy Spirit cools the Christian down. You know? Another thing the engine oil does for the car is um, it cleanses the car. Sometimes when the car is, 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 is being driven on its way, you know, it attracts some debris. It attracts some dirt, some dust. So what the engine oil does is it, it um, gathers all these dust. It gathers all this debris. And, and um, it takes it to the... To the um, to the oil filter and that way the, the the dirt is eliminated so when a car is being driven i rephrase i just want to rephrase what i just said when a car is moving when a car is traveling it attracts some dirt some debris some unwanted materials some dust some materials that are dirty so the car attracts these materials and what the engine oil does for the car is this. It takes, it, it kind of, you know, filters the, the, um, the, the, the engine oil, the engine from this debris. It, it attracts, it takes all, all the de deaths, all the debris, and, and, and um, to toss it to the oil filter. And that way, that, that dirt is eliminated from the engine. It's the same thing that the Holy Spirit does for the Christian. We Christians sometimes, we can, you know, encounter, you know, very dirty things in the world. For instance, a, a Christian might have children who go to school or to colleges. And in these places, there are, there are a lot of immorality going on in these places. There's a lot of sexual defilement in these places. The language is vulgar. You know, they, they see bullying. They see things that are that one cannot even imagine one cannot even conceive of and, and when they go home on t on and they turn on the tv all they see is the same thing all this all they see is filth in the world all they see is filth on tv you, you turn on the soap operas what, what you see is people talking about uh, how to you know how to hook up with this person how to take drugs how to take alcohol Glorifying alcohol, glorifying drug, glorifying se sexual immorality. You know, you see these things on TV. And it's, it's like people are being bombarded. It's like we Christians, are, we, not just we Christians, the world is being bombarded by filth. In every part of the world, in, wherever you look at, you, you say, okay, I just want to go to the shop to buy a newspaper. There you see immorality, you see sexual immorality. On every, almost every counter. You see things that are filth, you see, it's filthy. You see filthy things in all these places. You know? So you say, okay, I, I don't want to get I don't want to be a part of this worldly filth. I just want to go to the church. And you you get to the church, you find the same thing. The same thing you run away from the, the society. The same thing you run away from in the society. You go to the church and you find the same thing in the church. You you find the same thing in the church, you find false pastors. False preachers, you find people the, the dressed out, the, the dressed up like, like they are, they are, you know, like they are out in the in the nightclubs or something like that. You find immorality right in the church. You see men and women coming to the church to date, men coming to the church to look for women, women coming to the church to hook up with men. You find the same thing, the same thing you find in the world. You find it in the church. In the church, you, 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 you find 
witches and wizards. You find agents of darkness in the church. They now use the church as a recruiting ground. The things you run away from in the world, you find it in the church. You find false pastors, false preachers. They, they stand on the pulpit and say, um, the, the Lord says there are ten people who have to be blessed. And um, I need ten people to sow a seed of, of 1,000 euro. You know, he says, the Lord says there are ten people here who have to be blessed. So it makes me wonder, does it mean that the Lord is only interested in the rich people? Does it mean that the Lord just wants to bless the rich people? Does it mean that he doesn't want to bless the poor people? So, so the, 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 the richer you are, the richer you get with God, or the richer you, the, the, the more money you sow to the church, the, 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 the richer you get? Is that, is that how the Lord works? Is that how the Lord operates? Is it not the same? Is it the same Lord? Is it not? Is it not the same God who said in the Bible that the widow who sold all she, who put all she had, even though she had little, that she was more justified than the rich men who were who were putting out of their own abundance? Is it not the same God of the widows? So is is it not the same God who caters for the widows and who caters for the orphans? So when these people are, are, are out in the church, when they are in the church, saying things like um, the Lord wants to bless you if you sow a seed of, of, of 1,000 euro or 10,000 euro, it, it, it makes me wonder, is, is, this, is this what God is all about? So there are so many false prophets, there are so many false teachers in the church. You know, the same dirt that, that we Christians run away from in the world or in the societies or in the nightclubs. The same dirt that we run away from. We come to the church and we find the same thing. We come to the church and we find the exact same thing. That is why we, we Christians, we should go back home. Whenever we go back home from the church, we should lay our hands on our, on our children and pray for them. And break every, that the Lord will break every bondage. Because what is going on in the churches now, not every church, not every church, some churches, what is going on, the, the amount of filth that is going on in the church now is... Is alarming. That's why we have to lay our hands on our kids and pray for them that the Lord will break every evil hand that's been laid on them. Because the enemy now uses the church as a recruiting ground. You run away from the filth from the world. You run away from the filth you find in the world. And only to come into the church and find the same thing. Or even find worse than that in the church. You find you find false evangelists, false pastors. Treating God like he's a casino. Saying, come here, this is a fertile ground. Come here, come here and sow a seed and reap a hundredfold. For forgetting to tell the people that the Lord will reject your money if, if, if you're not living right with God. How can you tell somebody to come and sow a seed when he's living in immorality, when he's living a sinful life? His, his, his offering will not be acceptable. It will not be acceptable unto God. It will not be acceptable unto God. If you tell somebody somebody who is living an, a, 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 life, a life of immorality, a life that is not pleasing to God, somebody who, is, who, who in the house is beating up his wife, he comes to the church and he tells him to sow a seed, is that not defiling the house of the Lord? Is that not defi defiling the house of God? Do you think he will accept this, this kind of offering from your hand? So our church is filled, of, is, is filled up with false false pastors, false evangelists coming up with doctrines that are not of the Lord. So this same thing that we run away from in the world, we find it in the church. Now what the Holy Spirit does is He cleanses us from this filth. All this filth that we attract from the world or, and from, from different places and sometimes from the church. What the Holy Spirit does then is He filters these things. For those who who give him the, the chance to do that, for those who will allow, for those who are walking with him, for those who are obedient to the Lord, he will filter this this dirt from them. He was he will filter this dirt that they have accumulated. He will filter it and get rid of it. So that's what the Holy Spirit does. As the engine oil, you know, attracts all this dirt and sends it to the oil filter that it will be eliminated. It's the same way that the Holy Spirit also takes, it takes away this debt that we accumulate in the world. 
those death that you know we we uh, sub it's all, all those subliminal things all those subliminal fields that we accumulate in the world what the holy spirit does is he takes them and he gets rid of them and he cleanses us by the blood of the lord jesus christ now another thing the engine oil does for the car is it restores the uh, the, the engine back to 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 its former you know factory state so the engine oil restores the engine back to its former state you know en engine oil such as uh, you know special motor oil S such as the um, the synthetic and uh, high mileage oil what they do is they, they restore the the, um, the the engine back to its former state that's an engine that is already worn out you know through high mileage so what the engine oil does is it brings it back to its former state. It's the same thing that the Holy Spirit does for us Christians. Sometimes in our journey with the Lord, we might get exhausted. You know, we might get very exhausted or, or a little bit disheartened by what is going on in, in, the, in the world. As a result, we might not be as effective as we were in the beginning. So what the Holy Spirit does is he, he quickens us back again. The Bible says it is the spirit that gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The Holy Spirit then quickens us Christians back to the way we were in the beginning. You know, he, he, he awakens us. You know, he reminds us of, of, of the days of glory. He reminds us of what is ahead of us. He gingers us. He wakes us from sleep. That is what the Holy Spirit does for us Christians. You know, he restores us. I, I love the song that, that says, take me back there, Lord. Take me back to the place where I, I first received you. Take me back there, Lord. Take me back to the place where I, I, I first believed. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He brings us back to that place where we were in the beginning. That place where our hearts were yearning for God. Our hearts were hungering and thirsting for the Lord. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He, he restores us back to that former state. He, he, he makes us more hungry for those who who desire to, to get back to that state. The Holy Spirit helps you. The Holy Spirit is what you need. The Holy Spirit empowers you. He quickens you. He brings you back to that state where you are and the importance of this oil. Now let's go to Exodus chapter 27 verse 20. Exodus 27 20. And you shall command the children of Israel that they bring you pure oil pure oil just as he showed me in this revelation that this is a raw kind of oil a pure kind of oil an oil you cannot buy from the shop an oil you cannot buy from the fuel station an oil you cannot buy in the world a pure kind of oil original kind of oil pure oil of pressed olives for the light to cause the lamp to burn continually this, this oil causes the lamp to burn continually. This oil or this petrol will cause the car to move continually. This oil will cause the light to continue to shine. Without this oil, the lamp will not burn. Without this oil, you cannot drive your car. So a pure, it is a pure kind of oil, quality kind of oil, original kind of oil. A transcendent, a, an oil that the kind of oil that transcends other kinds of oil. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that is this kind of oil. You cannot buy the Holy Spirit in the world. Just as the Lord showed me that at the fuel station, they do not have this kind of oil. They never, they will never have that kind of oil. This is not the kind of oil you 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 buy as a handkerchief. This is not the kind of oil you buy in the church or in some churches. This is not the kind of oil you say, um, this is a place to sow a seed and reap a harvest. That is not how to purchase this oil. This is, this is not the kind of oil they sell in the church. They tell you, uh, this is anointing, um, pay a um, thousand euro and get this. No. This, this kind of oil is quality. This kind of oil is from above. This kind of oil, you do not have enough money to purchase it. You do not have enough money. You will never have enough money to purchase this kind of oil. The 
Holy Spirit is not for sale. Now, now I read. And, and you shall command the children of Israel that they bring you pure oil of pressed olives for the light to cause the lamp to burn continually. The, the Bible says, you, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and the lamp unto my path. For that lamp to shine, it needs oil. It needs the right kind of oil. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6 verse 22, that, that, that the, the eyes are the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, then your whole body is full of light. For that light to shine, it needs that oil. For that light in the lamp to shine to, or to burn continually, it needs that oil. It needs the Holy Spirit. And this kind of oil is not for sale. The, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 10 verse 8, Freely you have received, freely give. The Lord gave the Lord gave us the Holy Spirit for free. The Holy Spirit came to empower us out of his abundant mercies. He came to help us to live a godly life. And he is not for sale. No matter the kind of money you have, you can never afford to buy the Holy Spirit. It is, it, it is abomination, it is a blasphemy to even attempt to buy the Holy Spirit. You can never buy the Holy Spirit. As we can shortly see now in um, Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, starting from verse 1. Matthew chapter 25. Starting from verse 1 to 13, I read. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. That, 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 this is an illustration of, to, of the church of the state the church is at right now. We have two kinds of Christians in the church. We have the wise Christians and the foolish Christians. The wise Christians are, are always away. They're always alert. They, 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 they do not have the time to waste. They, 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 do, they do not have, they, they do not waste the time of the Lord. You know, the wise Christians see the importance of the oil. And to take extra, the, 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 the wise Christians understand the, the power of the Holy Spirit. The wise Christians understand the importance of the Holy Spirit. The wise Christians are not ready to fool about. They are not ready to fool around. The wise Christians will always, always regard the Lord as a priority, as the utmost priority in their lives. You know, the, the wise Christians, they are not ready to mess about. You know, and then we have other kinds of Christians who um, just allows everything to go. You know, for them, everything goes. You know, they come to the church, they clap their hands, they sing hallelujah, and they go back, everything is the same, no changes. You know, but there are Christians who, who re regard the Lord as a priority, who are not ready to, you know, who, who are not ready to compromise. You know, as we, as we can see here, in verse, I read from verse 6. And at midnight a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose to trim their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are running out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. You cannot share the Holy Spirit. You know, you have to, the Bible says, walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. You have to, first of all, take care of yourself first. You have to, first of all, make sure that you are filled daily before you can help someone else. You have to make sure that you are always on your knees, that you, you are always praying, that you, you are always seeking the face of the Lord, that you are not ready to compromise, that you are not ready to 
to mingle with the worldly ways of doing things. You know, before you can think of helping others, make sure that you help yourself first. Walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should, should, should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you do not know, neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. You know? Now, this, this, um, this verse, this scripture here, it kind of touches me a bit as well. Because we, we can easily, you know, miss our way. We Christians, sometimes we can easily miss our way, you know? The, the, the Bible says it's unto him. He's the, he's the only one who can keep us from stumbling. It's, it's, it's only the Lord, Jehovah himself, who can keep us from stumbling. You know? Anyone can, can easily fall into this, this trap. You know, because sometimes we, we can easily get carried away with worldly activities, with, with our jobs, with all different activities in the world, and these things consumes our time. You know? But what we need is to continually make the Lord a priority in our lives. Continually keep our eyes focused on the Lord. And, and to not be like the foolish virgins. Because just as the Lord showed me that I cannot buy this oil, I cannot buy the Holy Spirit, I cannot buy this petrol in, in the petrol station, in the man-made petrol station. A man-made petrol station does not have the oil to get me to my destination. A man-made petrol station does not have the kind of petrol that my car needs to get me to my destination. Only a raw kind of oil only a quality kind of oil, only a, an authentic kind of oil, only a, a, a supernatural kind of oil that comes from the throne of God. It's, it is only this kind of oil that can propel you to your final destination. The, the Holy Spirit cannot be purchased with money. It is a free gift. I, as, I, as I told you earlier in, in um, the book of Proverbs 25 verse 2. The Lord says, It is the glory of God to conceal matter, but it's the, it's the honor of kings to search out matter. You know? And we need the Holy Spirit. We need, we need the Holy Spirit. We Christians, we really, really need the Holy Spirit. And we should not make light of situation. We should not, we should not compromise. We should not be lax about the Holy Spirit. We should seek the Lord with, with all our heart, with all our might, with all our strength. If you're a Christian and you're not fasting and praying regularly, and you're not reading your Bible regularly, and you're not, um, you're not devoting some time to serve the Lord, it will be difficult it will be very difficult to walk with the Lord if, you, if you're not fasting regularly or praying as often as you're supposed to and not reading the Bible. It will be very, very difficult. You will find it very difficult to live you know, the Christian life, to walk the Christian walk without doing these things. And we need the Holy Spirit. If you're not yet baptized in the Holy Spirit, you better do, do so. If you have backslidden, if you're a Christian who have backslidden, say to the Lord, Lord, I want you. I need you. I am hungry for you. I am desperate for you. If, if, if you feel that you're not having that kind of zeal, the, the zeal that you used to have in the beginning, when you began your Christian walk, just ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. Ask the Lord to put that hunger within you once more. You know? Cry out to the Lord. Just lock your room. Forget you Get away from the noise. Get away from the noise of the world. Get away from the noise that is in the world. Just lock yourself in the room. 
get on your knees and ask the Lord, cry out to the Lord in desperation. Cry out to the Lord Jehovah. Worship the Lord. Worship Him. Worship the Lord. Cry out to Him and say, Lord, I need you. I need that hunger. If you feel like you, you've been drained, if you feel like you're no, you're no longer able to pray like you used to in the past, if you feel like, you know, the way you felt in the beginning, you're no longer feeling that way for the Lord. And you know within yourself there is something wrong. Cry out to the Lord. He wants nothing more but to fill you. To fill you with His glory. To fill you. You know, to, to put that fire in you once more. That fire you had in the beginning. If you feel like the journey is, is, is starting to get tough. If you feel like, the, you know, the, the journey now is starting to get tough day by day you know in the beginning when you when you first became a born again you used to pray for something and you, you get it immediately but after a while you pray for the same thing you're no longer getting it it's because you're supposed to grow to a certain height and when you're not growing when you're not growing you you, you know you, you your prayers will not be answered as they are supposed to as they used to be in the past so cry out to the lord cry out Tell the Lord, I need more. I want more of you. I want more hunger. I need you, Holy Spirit. For He is that oil we need. He is that perfect oil. He is that perfect oil that we need. That perfect oil that we need in our lives to live a good Christian life. It is the Holy Spirit. And without the Holy Spirit, there's no way we can make it. There's no way we can even make it to heaven without the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot. Without the Holy Spirit, we're just walking in vain. We're just fighting in vain. The Bible says, the, the, the Bible says, walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Because our heart, our, our, our heart is full of wickedness. You know, the flesh is very weak. The flesh is so weak. It, 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 it can be, it, you know, I was just reading earlier about the, 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 the five virgin, the five foolish virgin. It can be any one of us. It can be anybody. It can be you, it can be me. You know? Because this flesh, we have an enemy. We have an enemy within, which is the flesh. And if we do not subdue the flesh day by day, if we, not, if we do not cling on to the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, I am not letting you go. Lord, I am not letting you go. Without you, Lord, there is no life. Without you, Holy Spirit, there is no hope. Just cling on to the Lord. Tell him, Lord, if, 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 if you ever let go of me, Lord, I, 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 will be, I will be destroyed. I will be consumed. Cling on to the Holy Spirit. Tell him, you are you're all I have. It is you alone that I have, Holy Spirit. For without the Holy Spirit, there is no way we can live a, a good life, a clean life. Like I, I read to you earlier, what the engine oil does for the, oil, for the, for the engine of the car. It, it, that it, it, it lubricates it. It cools it, it protects it, it cleanses it, and it restores it. This is, these are the functions of the Holy Spirit. There are more, but these ones I can give you for now. These ones I can give you for now. It is the, the Holy Spirit that helps us. Without the Holy Spirit, there's nothing we can do. Without the Holy Spirit, there's no heaven. There's no heaven for any Christian without the Holy Spirit. For without the Holy Spirit, there's no way we can live a life that, that is... If it's fulfilling a life that is, is acceptable before God. It, that is why he is called holy. Holy Spirit, a spirit that is holy. A spirit that cannot stand immorality. A spirit that cannot stand in a place where there is blasphemy. A spirit that cannot stand in a, in a place where there is filth. And you know we are weak. Weak Christians. In fact, because we are hum humans, we are weak. But we need to walk with the Spirit. We, we, we need to cling on to the Holy Spirit. Because he's the one that gives us the desire that is contrary to the to, to the that of the flesh. The, 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 he gives us that that he makes us abhor what is evil and cling on to what is good. It is the Holy Spirit that gives us this power. The Bible says, Jude 24, 1 verse 24, that is unto him who is able to keep us from stumbling. It, it is the Lord Jehovah who is able to keep us from stumbling. For without the Lord, we, we will easily stumble. Without the Holy Spirit, we will easily stumble. Because we are flesh, we are only humans. 
We can easily stumble. That's why we need the Holy Spirit day by day. My friends, do not rely on the past glory. Do not rely on what happened last year. Do not rely on the revelation you received yesterday. Do not rely upon that. But seek more. Pray for more. Desire more. Desire Him more and more and more and more. And, and you will surely find Him. You know? The Bible says that those who seek me, you will find me. Those who seek me with all their hearts, which shall be found by me. If you seek the Lord with all your heart, you will find Him. If, you have, if you're a backsliding Christian, and, and you are desperate to return, ask the Lord. Get on your knees. Lock the door. Close the room. Switch off your phones. Get away from the noise of the world. And ask the Lord to return. Ask the Lord, oh Lord, I miss that, I miss that thing I had with you in the beginning. I miss that relationship I had with you. I miss those days, those nights that you will come speaking to my heart, speaking to my voice, showing me visions. Tell the Lord I miss that. I want it. I want it back. Speak to the Lord and he will surely answer. You know, and he will surely answer you. So my prayer is that for those who are struggling with the Lord, for those who are struggling in their Christian work, my prayer is that you get on my prayer is that the Lord will manifest himself to you again like he did in the beginning and also I have one advice for you let let your waist be girded and your lamps burning let your waist be girded and your lamps burning which is in Luke chapter 12 verse 25 let your waist be girded and your lamps burning and I pray that the Lord will continue to help you and the Lord will continue to help me the Lord will continue to help us Christians to run and to fight the good fight of faith Keep on running, 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 running until we attain that goal. But we attain the eternal life. Until we, we, we are, you know, until we finish the race, to, until we, that we shall have the strength to keep on running and running and running. Until we attain that goal. In Jesus' mighty name.
I will soar with you. 